Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, today I would like to continue talking about partial derivatives and uh, what exactly the usage of them in uh, researching the behavior of the functions. Um, this lecture is part of the course of advanced mathematics for teenagers and uh, high school students. It's presented on unizor.com. Um, and uh, if you are watching this lecture from any other source, like from YouTube directly, for instance, I do suggest you to switch to Unizor because it actually has link exactly to the same lecture, but at the same time, you will have notes for every lecture, very detailed notes, can be used as a textbook, and uh, for uh, certain topics, there are exams. So if you would like to be challenged, just do the exams. Um, the site is free, by the way, and there are no even advertisements, so you're completely free with one-on-one uh, one -on -one with uh, the studying. All right, so, now, before uh, talking about partial derivatives, let me just re remind you, um, one of the probably the main usage of the regular derivatives. Now, you remember that if you have something like a local extreme uh, maximum in this particular case or minimum, then um, the tangential line is parallel to um, the x-axis in this particular case, which means that the first derivative of this function, well, considering the function is smooth enough, uh, so the first derivative of this function in this particular point is equal to zero. And then we were using the second derivative to differentiate between maximum, where the second derivative is negative, because the angle is um, decreasing. Um, or in case it's a minimum, the angle is increasing, and that's why at this point, well, the first derivative is also is equal to zero, but the second derivative is positive. And then if the second derivative is, I, I, derivative is negative, well, we can deal with something like this. Remember, y is equal to x cubed. At this point, the first derivative is 3x squared, and it's equal to 0. But it's not a minimum, not a maximum, right? It's an inflection point. That's how it's called. Now, I just reminded you this, because in, um, uh, in, in case of the functions of uh, of two variables, we have exactly the same situation, but instead of regular um, derivatives, we will use uh, partials. So, let me draw something, and I, I have to apologize for not being a good artist. So, let me try. <laughs> okay, let's consider we have a three-dimensional space to um, have a representation of the function of two arguments, right? So these are x and y, and this is z. And we are talking about some kind of a function which has, well, let's talk about maximum in this particular case. And the way how I will represent it is something like this. So I hope I, <laughs> uh, I have drawn a, a graph of the function which has a maximum at this particular point. Now, if this is the point of the maximum on a surface, and obviously I'm talking about local maximum, right? So maybe it's somewhere else, it goes, doesn't matter where, but in this particular point, it's a local maximum, which means everything from this point in its immediate neighborhood maybe small neighborhood, whatever, um, is lower, is a function has a smaller um, values than in this particular point. So this is the point which, let's say, A and B. So the point A and B. Function is f of x, y. And what I'm saying is that the point a, B is a local maximum, which means F of A, B is greater, well, actually strictly greater. It's a real maximum. 
uh, greater than f of x, y, where x, y is some kind of neighborhood of AB. So if this is AB, this is some kind of a neighborhood around AB. So around this neighborhood, um, for any point x, y within this neighborhood, the value of the function would be less than function than the value at point AB. So this is the point of local maximum. Now let's talk about partial derivatives. And again, we are assuming the function is smooth enough, so partial derivative exists and they are continuous, etc. Whatever is necessary. So, let's investigate the behavior, let's say, of the partial derivative of function f of x, y uh, by, by x. Let's call it g of x, y. Because it's a function, right? We are partial derivative by one of the arguments is still the function of two arguments. So, um, how actually we uh, visualize the partial derivative um, by x? Well, we are holding y constant, right? So we are holding y constant at point b in this particular case, that's what we need. And we are cutting our uh, image of our uh, function by a plane which is cutting through this this is the plane and the uh, intersection will be one of these functions okay one of these lines so let's assume that this is an intersection this plane which goes like this basically okay it cuts our graph and this is this is the uh, intersection now the line which is um, parallel to xy plane in this case at this particular point will obviously be a tangential line and since this is the maximum point right because everything we can consider out right now within this plane and we're talking about only the function of one argument and obviously since this is a maximum point uh, for an entire surface it will be maximum point within the section within this plane so i have exactly the same situation as in case of the function of one argument which means my tangential line should be parallel to, to this line, or basically the whole plane, doesn't really matter, right? And it implies that my first derivative, which is actually a tangent of this line, um, should, should be equal to zero, right? Now, how can I prove it a little bit more rigorously? Well, that's actually very easy, because what is a derivative? Um, it's a limit of what? f of a plus delta x comma y minus f of a y divided by delta x as delta x goes to zero, right? That's what my partial derivative by x at this particular point, at point where, um, where I'm actually looking for this maximum point, right? Now, this is always negative, right? In the neighborhood of point A, B. Um, why? Because, um, well, actually I can put, actually I can put y is equal to B in this case because we are looking looking about we are looking at the partial derivative at point a b right so uh, y is equal to b it's fixed and uh, from a we uh, go slightly 
uh, by data x by, by delta x and uh, we have this difference between the values of the function divided by difference in argument now this is negative because f of a b is the maximum point so if we step from the left to, to the left or to the right um, by by x which means here or here it, within this within this line uh, if we will step from the point a we will only decrease the value of the function so this is negative now this is if we go to the left would be negative if we go to the right would be positive so the ratio will be either negative on the left or positive on the right which means um, it should reach zero exactly at point a b now similarly we can fix the x and have the uh, function h of x y is a partial derivative by y at point a b now what is that well this is a limit f of a now is fixed but b is incremented exactly the same thing f of a b is the maximum within the neighborhood of a and b which means this would be smaller so this is negative and delta x well actually i prob probably should put delta uh, delta y not that it matters but since it's increment by by y axis okay so my um neighborhood uh, around a b will have the point at a b is a maximum so this is negative and delta y as it goes to zero delta y in this particular case we are going along this from b to the left or to the right so from the left i will have this is uh from the left left means it's negative right so this is negative and this is negative so the function would be the, the ratio will be positive and if I switch to the right the function will be um, the, on, on top I will have exactly the same negative and uh, on the right I will have positive so it changes the sign so this thing is changing the sign around point a b which means at point a b it must be equal to zero we are again we are considering that the, that the function is smooth enough and the first derivative uh, by y or by x they're all continuous right so if a continuous function is negative on the left and positive on the right it should be zero in the middle right okay so basically that's a more rigorous proof but from the purely geometrical standpoint it's also obvious that partial derivatives which represent a tangential lines parallel to one of uh, 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 one of two axes is supposed to be equal to zero um, tangential line is supposed to be parallel so the uh, uh, partial derivative is supposed to be equal to zero so that's basically the uh, kind of a um, analogous situation to uh, the function of one argument over there we have one single uh, derivative which is equal to zero uh, at the point of maximum or minimum or inflection and in this particular case as I have just demonstrated with the maximum and it can be absolutely the same way demonstrated with the minimum um, uh, partial derivative both partial derivatives are equal to zero now let me now talk about um, necessary and sufficient conditions again as in the case with uh, functions of one argument equality of the uh, first derivative to zero is not a sufficient condition for maximum or minimum because as i was saying before it can be an inflection point like y is equal to x cubed where the where the derivative is equal to zero in this point same thing in this case in the case of functions of two arguments it's a necessary condition so if the function is reaching its maximum then the partial derivatives are equal to zero 
or if it's minimum, it's also. But it's not a sufficient condition for either of those because there might be mixed cases when the, situa when the function has something which we call a, a settle point. So let me just explain what settle point is. It's an equivalent of inflection for functions of one argument, but now we have two arguments. And again, I should really apologize for my artistic uh, representation of the settle point. It's really not easy, but if you can imagine how the saddle really looks. Okay, so let me talk about the saddle. Well, let's consider that we have a horse. Well, this is the horse. Does it look like a horse? <laughs> Okay, that's not uh, the case. The case is a saddle on it. Saddle has very interesting property. It goes around the horse, right? So it goes here and on that side of the horse. But whenever we want to sit, we have a little bit uh, raising here and here, right? So if we look from the top, um, then situation will be like this. If, if this is the horse body, then my surface goes like this around the horse but like this for the person to sit on it right so it's not a maximum or minimum because in this direction i mean if i will cut it this way i will have the maximum point but if we'll, but if if i will cut it this way i will have minimum point so this is basically a continuation a, a combination of this if I can say so. So, in a vertical um, section perpendicular to this direction, I will have the maximum, but if I will have the section parallel to horse body, I will have this. So that's what saddle actually is. And this is a very interesting surface because it has actually both partial derivatives equal to zero, exactly equivalently as the inflection point in case of function of one argument. And uh, there are um, many examples of this, and one of the examples which I have will be exactly like this. So, um, now the next question is, minimum or maximum, or a saddle point, I mean, how can I differentiate? Now, you remember that with the functions of one argument, I, we, we were using the second derivative. If my second derivative was positive, and the first, obviously, we are talking about first derivative is equal to uh, 0 at point x is equal to a. So, in this case, um, we are talking about minimum. If my first derivative is 0 at x is equal to a, my, but, but, but the uh, second derivative is positive, then we are talking about maximum. Because again, here, in case of a minimum, our tangential line is, uh, uh, in case of minimum, it's like this, right? So tangential line is increasing the angle, but in case of maximum, tangential line decreasing. The, uh, the, so, so this is monotonically increasing, and that's why the second, um, this function is monotonically uh, uh, um, increasing, and that's why the second derivative is positive. In this case, the first derivative is monotonically decreasing. Uh, what do I think? Maximum is this. Maximum is this, and minimum is, no, vice versa. So again, my first derivative is equal to zero at this point, but around this point, since it's a maximum, it's decreasing the angle. If it's a decreasing function, then the second derivative is negative. In this case, my, my minimum is, so it's from, um, 
so it reaches the zero at point of the minimum but the angle is increasing for increasing function my second derivative is positive now there is an equivalent of this type of um, uh, research done with the second with the, with the help of the second derivative there is an equivalent for functions of two arguments and here it is and um, unfortunately I cannot really prove it because it's rather involved but it's a, a criteria let's put it this way it's a very important criteria well, let's calculate the following thing. I will use the same um, the symbol delta, but it's not the same as before when I was incrementing the arguments. Now it's just basically a, an expression which, which I'm going to, to, to present to you. Okay, here it is. It's a second derivative by x times second derivative by y minus mixed derivative square. So this is much more complicated expression. Now in this case, just second derivative. In this case, since we have two variables we have two different second derivatives and this expression which combines together all um, second derivatives um, second derivative by x second derivative by y I should have put here and second derivative by a mixture first by x and then by y or first by y and then by x doesn't really matter right so whenever you are calculating this particular expression you can use it to differentiate between minimum and maximum and settle point. And here is the criteria. Now, if this delta is less than zero, it's a settle point. If this is greater than zero, it's max or minimum. Now, how to differentiate between max and minimum? This. if my second derivative by x is greater than zero it's minimum if it's less than zero it's maximum so why x and not y well actually it doesn't really matter because they have the same sign otherwise if they have different signs then this thing is definitely negative right because this will, will be negative and this minus of positive because it's a square so it will be negative so if this is positive it means they have the same sign second derivative by x and second derivative by y so either of them can serve in this particular case I can put dx2 or dy2 it's the same thing both of them are simultaneously greater or simultaneously less than zero to make delta positive so these are the criteria and again, I'm sorry I cannot prove that this is exactly the valid criteria, but I can illustrate it with examples. Okay. So let me go to examples. So I have two examples. One of them has maximum and another has a settle point so my function is okay let's start from um, uh, interpreting this graphically now obviously whenever x and y they are both square so it's always positive which means that the minimum value of this of the denominator would be when both of them are zero and if they are growing then denominator growing now since it's a denominator the whole uh, fraction would do in reverse so at x and y equal to zero we will have maximum and as x and y go to infinity then we will have 
uh, the whole function growing to zero. So basically it looks like this. It's like a cat, basically, right? With smooth uh, lines. Um, now, obviously, this is the point of a maximum. So let's check if our criteria are um, basically do whatever we are saying they're supposed to do. Well, first of all, derivatives. Now, now the first derivative by x is equal to now this is y is fixed x is a variable so this is 1 over something uh, so it would be minus this something square right and then um, inner function would be uh, uh, derivative of of this which is 2x so that's my first derivative now my first derivative by y is equal to absolutely similarly okay when are they equal to zero well the denominator is not equal to zero at all so it's always positive so the only value is x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. That's the point where my both um, uh, partial derivatives are equal to 0. Now let's talk about second derivative. Well, actually not just second derivative, but second derivatives. We need all the second derivatives. So we need second derivative by x squared, which is derivative of this by x all right so what i will do is uh, i consider it as a product of uh, minus 2x and 1 over so as a product i have to put 2x times derivative of this thing 1 over this expression square um, now that would be minus 1 over this expression to the fourth times uh, derivative of the inner function times now this is the square of something so it's 2 times this times derivative of what's inside. Where you, uh, I'm using chain rule again and again and again. Uh, times 2x. So what do we have as a result? Well, this is plus uh, 6x squared. And uh, this would be 1 plus x squared plus y squared uh to the third right am i right not sure did i do it right oh, okay let me just think again this is x times Okay, that's correct. Now, um, and then I have to add to this um, whatever I have here times the derivative of this. So it would be minus 2 divided by 1 plus x squared plus y squared square. So again, let me just explain what I did. 
uh, how to differentiate this. I consider it minus 2x times 1 over this thing square. So it's like a product, which means it's first times derivative of the second plus second times derivative of the first, right? So the first component minus 2x times derivative of 1 over this thing square, which is minus to the fourth degree times derivative of the inner, which is to this, and times derivative of inner this, which means this. And uh, plus, I have to have derivative of this one multiplied by 1 over this thing square. So derivative of the 2x would be minus 2, and this remains the same. Now, if I will um, use the common denominator, so I have to multiply this by 1 plus x square plus y square, it would be 6x square minus 2 minus 2x square minus 2y square divided by 1 plus x square plus y square to the third. Is that right? I have slightly different result. Oh, that's 8. That's why. It's not 6, it's 8. Because it's 2, 2, and 2. So now I have 6. 8 instead of 6. Or 6x squared minus 2y squared minus 2 divided by 1 plus x square plus y square. Okay, now this corresponds to whatever I have now. That's good. So, okay, so let me write it down here. Six x square minus two y square minus two divided by one plus x square plus y square to the power of three. Okay, now let's do the second derivative by y. Well, now here I will um, cheat a little bit. Um, because they are kind of symmetrical. Instead of x, I should, uh, I should substitute y, and then this will be changed into this. So I will do exactly the same thing. It's 6y squared minus 2x squared minus 2 divided by this. It's not much of a cheating, actually, because it's obvious. Since we are, if we are just substitute instead of xy instead of yx, x squared plus y squared will be exactly the same, but in this I will have this, or from this I will have this. So that's why I symmetrically changed x to y and got exactly the same thing. And the third component we have to calculate is second derivative uh, by a mixture. So I have to differentiate, let's say, this by y or this by x, doesn't really matter. Now if I will differentiate this by y, for instance, uh, two minus 2x is a constant, right? So it, it's remained without change. And then I have to calculate basically the derivative by y of this thing, which is 1 over this thing to the fourth with a minus sign, right? Times, times inner function would be 2, uh, times 1 plus x squared plus y squared times 2y, which is equal to minus and minus plus 2, 2 and 2 is 8xy 
divided by 1 plus x squared plus y squared. This is force and this is 1, this is numerator, this is denominator, so it's a 3. That's it. So I have all three um, second derivatives. By the way, again, this is symmetrical relative to x and y, as it's supposed to be, right? Because uh, d2 by dx dy should be equal to d2 by dy dx, and since we have a function which is symmetrical in the very beginning, then we should have it symmetrical as well, because it's by x and by y. Okay, so these three components. Now, what should we do? We have to do multiply this by this, and minus this square, right? So what will that be? At point, x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0, right? So now we can just substitute um, x0 and y0, and what do we have? Well, we have minus 2, everything else is 0, minus 2, because everything else is 0, and 0 if x and y is equal to 0. So it's multiplication of this by this, which is minus 2 times minus 2, minus square of this, which is 0 square, which is equal to 4. It's positive. And since it's positive, as we have just uh, told before, we have uh, either minimum or maximum but not the saddle point. If it's negative, it's a saddle point. But if it's positive, it's minimum or maximum. Now, what is it, minimum or maximum? And the recipe says, pay attention to the sign of the second derivative by one of the arguments, this or this, and it's negative. And since the second derivative is negative, then we are talking about maximum, as we had on the picture. So that's it, that's the whole research using the second derivatives. So again, my first derivative is used to find out where exactly is a stationary point. Stationary point is where my both derivatives are equal to zero. I don't remember if I told you this terminology, stationary point. That's where both derivatives are equal to zero. Okay, second is about the saddle point, actually. So my function is x times y. Now, I don't dare even to start drawing this thing. It's kind of complicated, the saddle. The, it looks very simple, but it's really kind of difficult to draw. But uh, on unizor.com, in the notes, I have actually all the pictures. Maximum, minimum, saddle point, and in particular, this, th th this uh, function is also graphed over there. So, um, let's do it basically using the apparatus of calculus. My first derivative, but in this case it's much easier than the previous. My first derivative by x is equal to y. My first derivative by y is equal to x. Now, when are they both equal to 0? Well, again, obviously at point zero, 0. Now we need the second derivatives to find out what exactly this is. Now, the second derivative is this by x is equal to 0, because by x, and this is the constant, y is supposed to be constant. Same thing, df by dy square, because this is x, we are differentiating by y, so it's also 0. And the mixture, oh, that's not a mixture, this is the mixture. So first by y we get x, and then by x we get 1. Or vice versa, first by x we get y, and then by y we get 1 again. As usually they are supposed to be the same. And now, this time this minus this square. So 0 times 0 minus 1 square, which is equal to minus 1. Negative, this delta is negative, which signifies that this guy 
this function has a settle point um, at zero. And it's kind of understood because if you will look at this function from uh, uh, on the both x and y positive, you will have that it's obviously grows this way. And if, uh, let's say you're going along x, y, z. So if you go along this line, so at this point it's equal to zero, obviously. Now, along this way, if you're increasing both x and y positive, right? Function is increasing, so function would be growing. Now, if you continue this uh, bisector to both negative, when both negative, it will also grow. So it will go to this. So if you will cut it along the uh, uh, plane, which is bisecting this angle between x and y, and going through the z um, axis. So going through the z axis and dissect the x, y angle you will get this type of things. Now, if you go in a perpendicular direction along this plane, so it's uh, going, the plane goes through Z, but it bisecting um, a different angle between positive Y and negative X. Well, if one of them positive and another is negative, then the result will be negative. And the more value, the more absolute value, the further we go, along this particular thing, we will go down. So it goes up here and down there. So that's what actually explains the, the settle point. And again, it's a settle point based on these calculations as well. Okay, so that's it. I do recommend you to take a look at uh, the unizor.com. Uh, this particular lecture, it has nice pictures, uh, which I have borrowed obviously from the web um, and uh, it makes actually your understanding of all these concepts a little bit better. Now what I didn't really do and I kind of feel sorry about this, I did not prove that this times this minus square of this gives you a good indication of whether it's a, a maximum or minimum or settle point and how to use the second derivative to differentiate between maximum and minimum. Well, I will check again, maybe I will um, present this particular proof um, in, in writing in one of the... but you can probably always find it on the internet anyway. Alright, so that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.